contact. The number is on the screen. Now, over the past decade, the RSPCA has received almost 30,000 complaints relating to the illegal puppy trade in England and Wales. When the pandemic hit, demand to get a puppy skyrocketed and unscrupulous individuals saw the opportunity to cash in and act illegally and irresponsibly. The RSPCA are tirelessly working to find and prosecute those involved. And Ian Muttit is here to tell us more about one of their recent cases. Thanks so much for, for joining us, Ian. So this particular case, it started with a phone call, didn't it? Tell us a bit more about what happened. Yeah, that's right. So uh, we had uh, a call to our, uh, one of our officers from Thames Valley Police after they were called to an address in Buckinghamshire uh, due to concerns over animals that appeared to be in distress. The police officers attended uh, and they came across uh, a number of puppies, 17 in total, kept in cages and in a, in a van in really squalid conditions with no adults present. I mean, these conditions, I think we've got some footage we can have a look at. It, awful conditions, weren't they? Yeah, sadly, these conditions are the type that we see regularly at, uh, at illegal puppy selling establishments. Um, and the conditions here were, were appalling. Um, dogs living in their own feces with dirty water, um, mixed litters of various ages kept together. And one particular puppy needed really urgent care, didn't they? That's right. Um, so during the search, there was a litter of five puppies found at the back of a van. Um, and when the officers looked at these puppies, one of them had a plastic cable tie tied around its neck. And that had got so tight that it had restricted its breathing and the, the puppy was actually in real distress. Um, officers tried to get it off at the address and get this plastic tie cut, but couldn't do that. Um, so they ended up with the police blue lighting that to the vets to get it, mm. uh, the, the, the plastic tie off. So cruel, just having a look at that image there. It's absolutely awful. I just can't believe people would actually do that to an animal. Now, the good news is the animal in question there made a full recovery and is actually joining us, chilling out on the floor in the studio live here today. This is little Henry. We're going to speak more to Henry's owner, Viola, in just a second. But, but coming back to you, Ian, now you think the gang were importing the dogs and pretending they were family pets, is that right? That's right. There's a suspicion with this particular case due to family link in Ireland that the dogs were being imported for sale as homebred dogs and certainly there was adverts on in the subsequent investigation there was adverts uh, for dogs as homebred family pets vet checked um, and fleed and wormed which clearly these dogs weren't yeah. um, and some of these adverts uh, ran in excess of £60,000 between uh, April and May uh, sorry April and July last year uh, 2021 these animals were, were sold and in excess of £60,000. a huge amount of money isn't it and obviously the, these gangs didn't have any licences or they weren't legitimate, but you managed to prosecute them. That's right. Um, there was no licence in place for selling or breeding at the establishment um, and subsequently convictions were, uh, were achieved. Um, the, the primary subject was given a seven-month custodial sentence um, for uh, consumer regulation offences um, and then also... Uh, a suffering offence for uh, to Henry here for the plastic mm -hmm. tie um, and uh, was subsequently banned from keeping animals. Um, the rest of the family were also banned um, and subjected to various fines due to the conditions that the animals were being kept in. Yeah, and rightly so. Um, Viola, really good to have you with Henry <laughs> in the studio. <laughs> He is just so chilled. I love it. I mean, how's he, how's he doing now? Do I need to ask? <laughs> no, <laughs> he is, he's Henry and he does whatever he wants to do and he's so happy to do it. That is, is so good to hear because looking at those images of him when he was a puppy and to, to see what he went through, I mean, what, what an ordeal. When you actually saw those images, Viola, what, how did that make you feel? I was in tears. I, I couldn't believe what people could do to dogs, mm. to animals, period, because I grew up on a farm in the States and it was just shocking. Yeah. Shocking. And when you first got Henry, what was his behaviour like then to now? Did it take him a bit of time to adjust and feel comfortable and trust you as an owner? Actually, he picked us out. Did he? When we went to the RSPCA to see him, he picked us out before anything. He saw us and they're mine. That's what oh. he said. He wanted to come home then, but we had to go through all the the paperwork and everything. Yeah. And he's quite happy. I think everyone's fallen in love with him in the studio um, today. And just coming back to you, Ian, we've, we've said that this illegal puppy trading, puppy farms is, is, 
is big business, isn't it? Are you still seeing more cases of this happening as we speak? Yes, officers from our team are relentlessly uh, dealing with investigations to do with the illegal puppy trade. And we've seen a huge increase since the pandemic, uh, both in the value of these dogs and the cost, but also in people uh, you know, looking to buy these animals. Um, and they are, you know, there's investigations across the country. Mm. So if you're looking to buy a puppy, I know we always say that you should make sure that you see the puppy with its mother, you should make sure that the owners are legitimate, that they've got all the relevant licences. What else should people be looking out for? Yeah, so the first thing we'd always urge people to consider is adoption. Um, there's a number of, of hundreds of animals across the country that are in uh, rescue centres looking to be rehomed. But if people do choose to uh, look to buy a puppy, there's lots of information available on our website, and in particular the puppy contract. And in there there's detail of all the different aspects to cover. What I'd urge anyone to do is to take their time over uh, considering buying a new puppy, to research the breed, to research breeders, to make contact with breeders. Uh, reputable breeders will engage in that conversation. Um, there won't be any pressure and they will, they will probably ask as many questions of you as you ask of them. And it's to take the, your time over the purchase. Um, and it, it really is something I can't emphasise enough. Um, we see a lot of victims of these frauds and, and being sold these puppies that do all the research after they yeah. bought the puppy Taking and start to realise. Just take your time and do, do that in advance. research first. Uh, Ian, really good advice. Thank you so much. Viola, thank you. Henry, what can I say? <laughs> 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 Ralph. Now, for a PC who wears two 